Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. How are you doing today, says and rest? I hope you're doing good. Happy New Year once again. Happy New Year. May the Lord continue to carry us through in the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Year, says and rest. God bless you in Jesus' name. Welcome once again to Home for Christ Gospel Messages. It's a new year. It's a new season. We give God a praise once again. We give glory to Him for this privilege, even to be alive, to hear His word in Jesus' name. Let's pray before we go into the word of the Lord. Have Father, we are grateful. We we are grateful. We just say thank you for all you've done, for all you are doing, and for all you're still gonna do for us. I pray that you give us the grace to continue to trust in you, to continue to depend on you, even as you're gonna speak to us today. Give us the grace to be the door of your word and your understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, says God bless you, mercy. I hope everyone is doing good with you around. God bless you and be with you all in Jesus name. Today we're going to be having our first message of the year. After last week we had our summary uh, to 2021 our monthly message summaries consisting of all our messages we had in the year 2021 that the Lord by his grace has given unto us, right? We got some points, some key points that we could take along with us even in the journey in the journey of this new year 2022. So congratulations, welcome to the new year and enjoy, continue to enjoy your journey in Jesus' name, in the blessing, in the glory, and the fulfillment of God's perfect will, purpose and plans for your life, to the glory and honor of his everlasting praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations once again. So today we're going to be having uh, the message titled, Is There Something God Cannot Do? Is There Something God Cannot Do? And this is a follow-up on our series of messages of Keep Serving God. Keep Serving God, Season 2, Follow-up Number 4. Keep Serving God, Season 2, Follow-up Number 4. By the grace of God, those the word of the Lord is coming on to you today for us to continue to encourage ourselves, for us to continue to have that determination nation to keep seven God. So keep seven God season two follow up number four. Is there something God cannot do? No, of course, right? No, 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 no. No matter how your request is is yet is, is in quote delayed it's still, God still have a purpose. God still have a plan. God knows the perfect time you want to bring it to fulfillment. So therefore, there is nothing God cannot do. Keep trusting. Keep trusting God. And we're going to see today, let's go into the Bible and we're going to see some reflection as we continue to explain. Second Kings chapter 6, uh, Second Kings from chapter 6. Okay, this is the story about prophet Elisha and the children of Israel. So about this prophet which God has chosen for this nation, right? This is people and they really like, they, they want to hear from God. They have to like talk to this prophet. They're having some issues one way or the other, they have to talk to this prophet just like the time of Moses something is going on, they don't have water they have to complain to Moses Moses, you gotta get us water we need water, please talk to God for us like oh we have sinned, please help, help us beg God even when the Lord descended on the mountain and having conversation with Moses and the, they saw the glory of God they were like oh no 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 we don't want to like, we don't, we, they had to like move back, we don't, anything he says to us we're gonna obey, we're gonna we're gonna follow his instruction so at this time now Elisha, God has chosen Elisha to be the prophet towards them to to like womb is as his vessel, vessel, vessel to speak to his children. Now they're having this famine in the land. The king of Syria has come around. He want to like make war with these people, so he surrounded the the country, and they couldn't even go out to to like get some food from of uh, from the surrounding like to get. So now like they've they've exhausted whatever they have in the land. Now there's famine, there's issue going on. Like like even in chapter six, we had situation whereby like a, a, a two women they agreed even to 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 kill their child, their son, one of them, they agreed, okay, let's kill uh, my own child today and tomorrow we're gonna kill my, my own son. So they are, the first one volunteered his own child and that was how terrible this famine was so, was too much in the land. 
But now, verse 7, the king was, before the chapter 7, the king was frustrated to the extent, like he was annoyed, like, like, look at, you are the prophet of God, you, you need to find a solution to this, like, God even caused this thing to happen to us. The king began to, like, put the blame on God because of the situation. And that is the time, just, we, this, this is kind of like a reflection even to the time of the pandemic. Some people are also saying like, this is the cause, this is the work of God. Like this, God also, like God make this happen. They begin to direct the, uh, the blame to God. Forgetting that God loves his people. The God who knew we were in terrible situation of sin and we could not save ourselves, we could not deliver ourselves. We need somebody, someone to rescue us. The Lord, the God Almighty, who volunteered, who gave up his only begotten Son by love. So we should be careful not to put blames on God when we are facing challenges. But today, there is nothing God cannot do. We encourage like we continue to trust God, regardless of the situation, depend on Him, rely on Him, because there is nothing He cannot do. Now, during um, chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Now, the king has been frustrated. Now, the, the, the word of the Lord is coming through his prophet. He says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seers for a barley for of barley, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer was, and the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? This servant of the king is using the condition of the land to judge the power of God. Ah, we are talking about there's famine in the land. There is no food. People are finding it difficult to eat. You are now saying tomorrow, just tomorrow, by this time, like, so like, like things will be sold in a cheap amount because it's going to be so surplus. That's what the prophet, the prophet says, me, meant. And this servant of the king is like, is that possible? Ow, 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 ow. And this is the situation. There is nothing. We got, forget about your condition. Forget about your situation. Forget about your current situation. And put your trust. Put, continue to have your faith in God because there is nothing God cannot do. Let's see how God manifested the fulfillment of this prophecy. And looking at the... The doubting of this uh, king servant, verse 16, from verse 16 it says, Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, but the people trampled on, trampled him in the gate, and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. Praise the Lord! And actually, I didn't read what the 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 the, um, the prophet told that servant. That was in verse two. He says, and he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it, because he doubted. What the word of the Lord came uh, that that came out through his pro prophets, he doubted, and at the fulfillment, of course, he heard about the news. Of course, he saw the fulfillment. But the king has now put him in charge of the gate, like he should take charge so that people don't like don't just rush. He could, he could coordinate the people as they come in to get the food. But they trampled. He says, he says, verse 17. Now the king had appointed the officer of on whose end he leaned to take to have charge of the gates. But the people trampled in on trampled in, in the gate, and he died, just as the man of God had said. 
who spoke when the king came down to him praise the lord is there something god cannot do there is nothing god cannot do regardless of the situation regardless of the condition we should put our trust in god matthew 19 26 it says with men this is impossible yes with men but with god nothing shall be impossible with god all things are possible praise the lord praise the lord let's continue to wait on the lord let's continue to trust in him let's remain with him depend on him and hold on to him if god has not done it right now does not mean he won't do it and he or he cannot do it no if he hasn't granted you your prayer request right now doesn't mean he can do it or he's not gonna do it no but it simply means that you should continue to remain patient with him and while you are still waiting while you are still trusting him to answer your prayer to give you a desire to give you your uh, his perfect will for your life Continue to trust in Him. Continue to have faith. Continue to rely on Him. Continue to depend on Him. Continue to serve Him. Because there is nothing God cannot do. Keep serving God. Keep serving God. Even in this new year, keep serving God. You need to, you need to be reminded that there is nothing God cannot do. And keep serving God. Regardless, regardless, regardless of, of your, your, your desire you're still waiting for, that is yet to be fulfilled. Keep serving God. And may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Our second Bible passage is taken from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 13 to 18. This is the story about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Yes, they, 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 they were confronted about denying the Most High God. About disobeying the Almighty God. But these ones knew that no, we will keep serving God. Yes, uh, you are you're, you're, you're threatening us with death you're threatening us with being thrown into the fire but we will not deny god we will continue to rely on god we will continue to obey god and depend on him because we will keep serving god all the days of our lives and that will be our testimony as well that will be my testimony that will be your testimony continue to be our testimony forever we will keep serving god in the name of jesus christ regardless of the condition in jesus mighty name amen amen god bless you god bless you you need to keep praying everything to fulfillment no matter how it may feel just pray because god answers prayer pray it at the when you begin to, when the something like the challenges begin to happen the prayer you have prayed for god to fulfill that will strengthen you and without knowing from anywhere you just have the strength yes and the boldness and the courage to fulfill to rely on god to trust in god to depend on god and you will survive the situation and you will testify to the glory of God because you will keep serving God. God bless you as you keep serving Him in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 13 to 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods all worship the gold image which i have set up now if you are ready he begins to like okay let me just keep reading now if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn flute up lil and some tree in symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which i have made good but if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the uh, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? <sighs> who is the God? This is the challenge. And this is where the child of God needs to stand. Who is the God? <sighs> and let's see this how the children of God stood took their stand that yes ah who is that god okay verse 16 should up meshach and abednego answered and said to the king oh king we have no need to answer you in this matter if that is the case 
if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, but if not, listen, king, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we, we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Praise the Lord. May the Lord be placed through our lives forever, through our decisions, through our actions, through our words forever. In the name of Jesus, through our faith and our boldness, our confidence in Him forever. In Jesus' name. Because of our time, let's go, let's see the conclusion. The conclusion. After they've taken this boldness, they've taken this stand with God, and they were thrown into the fire right now. The miracle has happened. Let's see what this king that was threatening them did. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Praise the Lord. Is there something God cannot do? No. Is there, is there something God cannot do? No, there is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing. Let us let us trust in God alone. And to the extent that even if he chose not to grant our request at this moment, we believe, we have the faith, we have the confidence that yes, I know. Heavenly Father, I know that you are still going to do it. And let's continue to serve God. Just like your spouse, right? Our daddies and mommy. You know your spouse love you, either from daddy or from mommy, either from it, whichever side. You know your spouse love you, and you requested a, uh, a gift for your birthday, a particular gift, and uh, your spouse responded, "Please give, just give me. I have it in mind. I'm working on it. Just give me some time." Yes, you desire like, oh, I, I, I need it at this specific time. Oh, I know. I, I, I'm still. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Even if, unfortunately, of unfortunately, he, uh, he or she couldn't fulfill it at that specific time, you still know that this person loves you, and like he's still giving. Like, I am what, please, honey or oh dear, sweetheart, just please, just give me some time. I am working on it. I'm working. On it. So, what am I bringing out from this? You love and trust your spouse to the extent that even if, unfortunately, he couldn't achieve that goal when you expected it to be manifested, you know that he or she loves you and at even after at his uh, word, promise, he or she is still going to fulfill it as said. So likewise towards God. And at this moment, since you already knew that he or she, your spouse, love you. You, can, regardless of the unachieved goal, the un, un, yet to be fulfilled goal, you're still going to continue to love, take care of your spouse. If if you have to like cook or if you have to like get grocery from either side for your spouse, you take care of each other, despite the pending fulfillment of your expectation. So likewise towards God. So therefore says the mess, let's continue to serve God, regardless of the situation, regardless of, 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 of the condition of our prayer request, of our desire. Let's keep serving God, trusting God, because there is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing, there is nothing God cannot do. Let's continue to rely on Him and wait on Him. Let's continue to trust. Let's continue to trust on Him, love Him, and keep serving Him. Even though your prayers are yet to be answered, keep serving God and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you for your time and likewise your attention. Is there something God cannot do? No, there is nothing. God cannot do. So therefore, keep serving God, keep trusting, loving, serving Him, and waiting on Him, because God will do it according to His perfect rule. In Jesus' name, God bless you, says, and God bless you, mess. See you next week. God bless you.